Hi, my name's John. Welcome to part five in a series of short videos all about the metalwork in a lathe. In this episode, I'm going to cover machining to a shoulder. Machining to a shoulder is a very common operation on a metalwork in a lathe. It's quite easy, but it is also quite easy to get it wrong. Anyway, that's enough talk. We'll bring the camera in. I'll show you what tools I'm going to use and we'll see if we can get a, a nice machined shoulder. By machining to a shoulder, what we mean is the distance between there and that shoulder. That's actual shoulder there. There's another one there, that's a bolt, and that's a shoulder on the bolt. That distance there isn't critical on a bolt, but it could well be on this part here. The part's done with a right hand knife tool, either a factory formed tip or a hand ground tip. If you notice that angle, between the two faces it's less than 90 degrees which means you can get the tool into the corner so you can cut on that face and then you can pull out and cut on that face if the tool was square 90 degrees you wouldn't be able to do it the radius on the end of the tool determines how tight the radius is going to be on the inside of there sometimes on shafts you need a radius to give more strength but it might need to be undercut if you've got a collar to go straight down onto there. That's another right hand knife tool. As you can see that's also a less than 90 degrees. And that's got a more pronounced round tip on. That gives a better surface finish. But it will leave a bigger radius in there. There is a way of getting around that which will show as we carry on. If you wanted to put an edge like machine to it a face on there you would use a left hand knife tool which is that one and that will machine in there and then come out so they're the tools I'm going to be using I'll find a piece of suitable bar and we'll have a little bit of experiment a little bit of turning and see what sort of problems you can run into and I'll show you how I measure it and how I set them up right, so I've got a piece of suitable stock in the collar chuck all I'm going to do is machine the end flat it's got a hole in there, it doesn't matter about that, it's just a piece of scrap stock I found. Right, so I'm going to face the end using the right hand knife tool again. Right, that's the end faced off. Now the tip of this tool is exactly on the end of there. So we need to measure from there to the shoulder. There's a few ways of doing it. Depending on how accurate you need to be, you can simply put a ruler on the end and put a mark on and do it that way. If you need to be more accurate, you need to start measuring things. This is the hand wheel that makes the carriage go back and forward along the wheels of the lathe. There's no markings on this at all, nothing. So that on some lathes that has got calibrations on, but this particular lathe, it hasn't. The lathe compound slide is calibrated in metric in this particular case. So what you could do is turn the compound slide to be in line with the wheels of the lathe and use that to dial in how far you want it to go with your shoulder. Another method is to use it dial indicator it's just a magnetic indicator you can set that to zero this one happens to be imperial but you can get metric as well so you can set that to zero and wind in your carriage for whatever distance you wanted the shoulder to be but not fully there suppose we wanted 200 thou we'll bring it in to 5 thou less than 200 and do your machine up to there and then your final cut you bring it into the zero and take your final cut this lathe is fitted with the DRO so we can zero the DRO that's in inches and we could wind in for 200 thou just short of the 200 thou then you can do your machine into that and then your final cut will be in to the 200 Then you would machine away from it and that would leave the, the shoulder. 
you can also zero that and then you can machine up those zero when it's at zero you know you have wood right so i'm going to use the DRO because it's there we'll touch it off zero the DRO put in some cut it depends what you're making how much cut you're going to put on and you will take that in once again we'll work on the 200 thou start just short of the 200 thou and you another cut this is not nice material at all doesn't like it Right, so I'll put a different tool in, I'll have to set it up again. We'll reset the zero. Then I put it still not nice. smaller lightweight lathe you can be able to lock off the carriage so it doesn't move and all you would do is wind that out so now we've got a nice finish on there that's down to size and we're 200 throw in now that is a very very slight radius in there it's a very slight one Sometimes you don't want the radius in there, so what you do, you'll put a parting tool in there and just take a very light cut with a parting tool to take it out. And as I've said often on shafts, you need a radius to give it strength. If you look at a car crankshaft or a steam engine crankshaft, the hog would have beautiful fill it on where the crank web turns into the crank journal, and that's purely and simply to give strength. Right, we'll do it again, but this time we'll use the, the dial indicator, the clock gauge. So the first thing is to face the end of the bar. Right, so now the tool is right on the end of the bar. If we zero the clock gauge, we we'll put some cut on. Right, then we'll put in for there's 100 thou, 195 thou. Right, so once again, it's on zero. There's 100, 195. Right, we'll make this the last cut. Right, that's 195 there and we'll put the last 5 thou on which is there bring the tool out and that's your nice square shoulder as I've said there will be a little radius in there so if we put a parting tool in And all you want to do is take out that very, very inner corner there, bring it in, it just touches, just touching the shoulder there, and then just, and that's all it needs. So now we have got a true 90 degree sharp corner. Now I've got the compound slide set parallel to the wheels of the lathe. So I can use this dial on here as a direct reading how much I'm going to take off up to the shoulder. 
This happens to be metric. I'm going to lock the carriage off and we're going to do all the machining on that compound slide. So lock the carriage off, has a little lock nut under there. So the main carriage of the layers now can't move. You turn this in until it just touches the shoulder, which is there. And then we'll zero. Right, so that's at zero, so we'll put our cut on. We need say two mil, so that's just short of two mil there. So we'll bring it back. Put some more cut on. Right, so we'll take the last cut onto the shoulder. That's all we've been going to, that's 1.9 and the last little bit, 2 mil, wind out the carriage and wind out the cross side. I hope you managed to pick one or two little bits up from there. Um, having a DRO on the lathe does make it easier. It's not more accurate, it's just easier. As I've shown, you can get away using the compound slide, you can use a dial gauge. Depending on what you're making, you can use a ruler and a scraper. It just depends how accurate you've got to be. Anyway, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I, I enjoy making these little videos. If there's anything you want us to cover, just send us an email. But don't forget, I'm not a machinist, I'm just a mechanic. It pisses about. Anyway, thanks for watching.